So what we're going to talk about today is this indicator here. Now this is your exposure value. In simple terms, your exposure value is the measurement of light within the image. It's not necessarily just your shutter speed or your aperture. Um, it's the general light that's coming into your image. Now, as you can see, it's got the, the main dial here, and then it, it's got an indicator. What this indicator is, is saying what the light levels are in the image. So at the moment, my indicator's over the halfway line. The halfway line is your where your average light should be in your image. So at the moment it's telling me that my the light in my image is too high. So what I'm going to do is have to alter either my shutter speed, ISO or aperture in order to get that bar back down to the middle so that we know that we've got correct at exposure. Now you can't say that one exposure is the perfect one because different people prefer different looks like I may prefer my image to be quite dark and then other people may want it sort of medium and other people may want it a little bit overexposed obviously this isn't the best example but say you were taking scenery you know some people want more shadow some people want less uh, some people want that sort of hazy look so you can't say that one exposure is perfect but this is like an average exposure so it's quite good to measure your photography on that so just to show an example I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so at the moment it's saying I'm overexposed my ISO is actually quite high so I'm just going to turn that down to maybe 200 and suddenly we find that that exposure has dropped down too low now so I either need to slow my shutter speed or lower my aperture number so I'm going to lower the aperture, I can't because I've zoomed in so I have to lower my shutter speed so slow it down so as I slow it down you'll see this indicator is going up and down on the side so it's saying I'm overexposed here I'm underexposed here but I should have an average exposure there which actually isn't too far off what the box looks like right now in front of me. You'll have other things that are affecting it. At the moment I've got my vivid colour on so the colours are going to look more um, intense than they would normally if I just switch that off. That is actually pretty much what I'm seeing in front of me now. So that exposure is quite accurate. You may find that then I just tilt the, the camera down. Maybe there was something I wanted to take further down. You see suddenly I'm overexposed. I'm looking at a much lighter area. This, this sheet here is a lot lighter. So now I'm going to have to play with my shutter speed again until that levels out again. Then I can take that image and the exposure should be pretty accurate. Which it is for the lighting that I'm in. So to understand our exposure value, we need to understand the scale that the shutter speed, aperture and ISO use. So if we go to change one of these, if we just go to change our shutter, if I just turn the wheel, you'll see this bar come along. And you'll see that there's numbers along the bar. Now each number is a stop. So you'll hear people say, the exposure comp compensation is plus two or two stops and that basically means two of those numbers so if it was if you're doing a shutter speed of a thirtieth of a second and you were told to go up two stops you wouldn't go like two clicks because these are just fractions you'd go two numbers so you wouldn't go a sixtieth you'd go to a hundred and twenty fifth of a second so each aspect has its own scale so the shutter speed you'll see that you've got the scale here and the stops along that one it looks the same for your aperture uh, the main difference is the the numbers that are being used obviously the number scales aren't the same but you still have the the stop numbers and then with your ISO each change here is a stop so between 1600 and 3200 that's one stop so they're basically units to measure the exposure. We've got a balanced image here. Now actually on my screen it's kind of yellow, it's not the, the nicest, it's not quite bright enough. So my personal opinion would be to turn up the brightness. So for me I'd rather have a brighter picture than the one that the exposure value meter is telling me to pick. Now this is more realistic but this is what I'd rather use. So it, it all depends on personal opinion. As I said, there is no perfect exposure because it's all down to the photographer what you want to pick. So now we know what a stop is, one of these numbers, 
we can adjust our settings depending on what sort of thing we're taking a picture of. So I wanted to take a picture of a waterfall, but rather than have the water looking sort of silky and smooth and blurred, maybe I want to capture that water as droplets, like very, very quick photography. So whilst I may have my picture balanced here with the meter, I've got quite a slow shutter and that's not going to give me that quick capture that I need. So if I'm on a fifteenth of a second, the meter's telling me that that's a good balance of light. But I want to do a faster shutter, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep an eye on how many stops I move when I want to use the faster shutter. So I'm on a fifteenth of a second now. So you'll see I'll go past 30, so that's one stop, two stop, three stop, four stop, five stops. So let's just say I stop at 1,500. Now to let more light in, clearly it's too dark, I can go down with my aperture but bear in mind that's not going to allow me to go five stops which is what I need to get the balance. So I see how many it lets me do, so that was about half a stop, so we'll just say it'll let us do one stop. So I've still got four stops I need to make up for. So on my ISO I go one, two, three, I can only go three. So you'll see I'm still slightly underexposed. So in this lighting situation I can't make up those five stops that I increased on the shutter speed which means on the shutter speed I'm going to have to go back down one stop so to a 250th of a second and you'll see that metering has gone back to the centre so I can use a faster shutter but I've compensated for it with the ISO and the f-stop. If I was in a brighter daylight condition I would have been able to use the ISO and the f-stop and get a faster shutter but unfortunately in here it's not the best example so if I did it the other way I've got my light meter centered it's saying that we've got a good balance maybe I want to do a slow shutter maybe a second so we're going to see how many stops we pass to change the shutter speed from a 250th of a second to one second so we go down one two three four five six, seven, eight, that's eight stops. So now we want to shut out a bit of light so we can increase our f-stop. So that's one, two, three. So we now have five other stops that we want to change. So go to our ISO and go down one, two, three, four, five. So we're down on ISO 100 and our balance is still slightly overcompensated so it may be slightly brighter but you'll find that we pretty much got the balance that we need to use that slow shutter. So I hope that explains it. So basically, for for any aspect that you want to change, you have to compensate for that by changing one of the other aspects, and you can keep an eye on it with here. I mean, you could easily, I could just say, I want to use shutter speed of a fifteenth of a second. I can see that it's too underexposed, so then I can just turn these wheels until that gets a little bit closer to the centre but obviously there we go I found the balance but I'm going in and out of my settings a lot it's a lot easier to say well I changed that setting I passed four stops so I need to compensate that with four stops between the two other settings hope that makes sense and that sort of explains exposure value and how to sort of meet your images and get a generally average lighting in your image which you can then manipulate to look how you want it to look.